Welcome to Lawyers in the House with Motley. Wish you had a lawyer in the family? Now you do. Here's your host, Veronica Waters. Welcome on into the house. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm Veronica Waters. Picture this. Imagine that you find yourself in a place where you feel the need to say, this is horrible. But I guess this is my life now. Nobody's listening to me when I need help the most. They called me a fraud. Police said it was my fault. I guess nobody's ever going to take me seriously. And I have to live with this for the rest of my life. These are the kinds of cases from which the two lawyers in the house with me today never shy away. And if you've been rocking with us for a while on Lawyers in the House, then you've met them both before. Nevis Yurich and Mike Moran. I'm your host, Veronica Waters. You guys, thanks so much for being back in the house on Lawyers in the House with Motlick. Thank you for having us. It's great to be back. We're talking about long shot cases mm-hmm. today, folks. And one of the things I've learned about Mike and Nevis is that they are so persistent and so passionate. And as I said, don't run from a fight even when things look tough. But I want to know, what's a long shot case look like in the first place? How do you even, how does it even come to you? What does that even look like? Long shots. Well, there's all kinds of classifications and it's great to see you again. Thanks for having us back. Um, A long shot case can be a low property damage case. It can be a case that happened on private property. It can be a case with disputed liability, but essentially at its core, it's an insurance company denying a case for a client. And at the other side of that denial is somebody who has been horribly hurt. And what they're hearing is no, we're not going to pay your medical bills. We're not going to fix your car. You're going to be left in financial ruin. We don't believe you. So that's what the denial is saying. Um, And our job would be to get into this case and turn the tide and and turn a denial into a victory. And and that's the most rewarding part, I think, of practicing law is is working for somebody who's been told all those things and then us being able to lift them out of that. Yeah, Mike, you told me that you actually relish these kinds of cases. Absolutely. Because they are, they're, they're, they're sitting in their pain. They're sitting and being told their pain has no value. Um, they're face, facing financial ruin, uh, bills, cars, you name it. And, uh, they're desperate and, um, all they've heard is no. And they may have heard no from other law firms as well. And, and those are the cases where, uh, I find them personally rewarding is when they've had a series of no's, they give us a shot, we get into it and bring our resources to bear and turn a no into a victory. That's incredibly rewarding. Nevis Yurich, what do these cases have in common from your point of view? Um, Similarly to what Mike just said, um, we are dealing with cases that sometimes have very low property damage. Um, We are dealing with cases with people who might have disability already or injuries that they've already dealt with that are similar to the ones that have now been uh, re-aggravated. And the wreck, we're dealing with cases where our client might have been the one that was cited. Um, so the officer that came to the scene and investigate the matter put our client at fault. Um, essentially, these are cases where either uh, the insurance company or an attorney that they've spoken with before has already said, we can't help you. Um, and so, like Mike said, these are people who at times are very hurt uh, their livelihood has been significantly impacted. Um, their cries for help are not heard. Uh, they've been denied um, their right for compensation, and they have nowhere to turn. You also like to get into these cases, and you all are so creative in the ways that you sort of solve these problems. But some of it looks like just shoe leather, right, and elbow grease, from what I'm hearing. Mike, talk about... Um, Nevis mentioned something about pre-existing injuries. And I remember that we talked about uh, the eggshell plaintiff in a previous show that we did. I think it was our second episode um, about medical malpractice. And 
Um, so we know a little bit about that, but can you talk, like delve into that a little bit? What's that all about? That's got to be a, a, like a, an extra challenge. Yeah, I had a client who called me and um, it was the perfect storm. It was, uh, he was hit on the back of his vehicle by a, a girl who left a big box store and she failed to yield. And there was very, very minor property damage, so much so that they decided that they wouldn't even call the police. So there wasn't even a police report. They just exchanged information. Now he had uh, back surgery about four months prior to this wreck. Um, they exchanged information and didn't think anything of it. Uh, he went home, sat in a chair, and almost immediately realized uh, something was wrong. And so um, it was a perfect storm because it was very little prop property damage. There was no police report that, that recreated how it happened. Um, and so I, had a, I, I took his case. I believed him. I knew he was hurt. I talked with him. He was credible to the bone. Um, I met him at the scene. I, we had to take photographs. We had to recreate how it happened. And we still got no's, no, 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 from the insurance company. This could not have caused the injury. Ultimately, um, his surgery failed and because of this, and he had to have a revision done. Um, so he suffered for a long time, and, and we, after repeated no's, had to put this into a lawsuit. And the, the biggest thing was I knew he was credible. We had to get him in front of people, and he had to tell his story. And he gave his deposition, and, and he did, and he was believable, and the defense counsel believed him. And... Um, after a long fight, we resolved that case for $350,000. And so it went from a zero and a fat no entirely from the beginning to uh, a recovery for him. And, and it was because his condition worsened, even though there was no police report, there was very little property damage. Um, I knew it happened. He knew it happened. And at the end of the day, we were able to prove that. How must that feel, not just for you, the attorney who helps guide this victory, but for the person who has already been told no, 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 I said no. They don't understand. They, they don't understand that. I'm sure Nevis has had clients like that as well. It's hard, it's hard for them to understand that. Once we win for these clients, um, it is so gratifying to know that people who felt helpless and hopeless whose families sometimes met with us and told us how their life has been turned upside down. Uh, people are losing jobs. They have to have surgeries. They have families to support. Um, the pain in their voices, sometimes it's just too much to bear. Um, so winning for these people uh, whose pleas for help were uh, ignored by either insurance companies who deny their claims or attorneys who had spoken with them before but didn't believe in the merits of the case, it is an unbelievable feeling of vindication. And um, those are the most rewarding uh, moments for me personally. I'm sure Mike can attest to that, to know that we've overcome a challenge that some people just thought was too much to tackle. Quickly, why would another attorney turn something down? Is it just because it doesn't look like an easy win? It could be for a myriad of reasons. Um, sometimes not every attorney has the same experience in mm -hmm. fighting the good fight. Um, interpretation of the law, uh, facts, being creative, uh, doing the hard work to investigate and find the evidence that helps uh, overturn liability. Some attorneys probably don't want to do the work. They want an easy win. Um, but you can have great wins with some of these cases that others have turned their backs on. You've got to have the resources, too, and you've got to be able to put in the work. Um, as we go through the show, I would love to hear some of, some more of your stories about some of these incredible things that you've turned around. Nevis, um, there was one case, I think in particular, um, where you had some folks who hadn't even gotten to a doctor? Yes. Um, these folks came to me, um, having been represented by another firm for a couple of weeks. Already with another firm? Yes, they were oh. already with another firm. They came, um, you know, they asked for help. Um, and uh, once I t took their case, um, you know, I realized that they were very hurt uh, without any medical care. Um, neither was employed at the a time, and um, it, it was a really tough situation to be in. Once I took over the case, I, I made sure to help them 
uh, navigate through the process, get to a doctor, get the medical care that they were desperately needing. Um, and um, after doing some investigation, um, I found out that there was more to the story. We were able to get punitive damages uh, on the case as well. And in, in a few months, we were able to get policy limits on both cases. Uh, two cases that I felt like were neglected by another firm, but more importantly, that didn't allow our clients to get better and recover because they had no medical care. Are you talking about like a really healthy judgment for these folks? that you were able to recover? You know, it, we, we were able to get the limits on the case. Um, so in, in those two instances, we got the maximum value that we could. Again, you've got the feeling of the vindication. Mm -hmm. Like I really did right by these folks, but um, I just keep putting myself in the position of somebody who's been, sit, who's been told, get out of here, sorry, can't help you. And just to know that somebody was on my side mm -hmm. and saw things through. What about though, when somebody says, you're the one at fault, you did something wrong. So, you know, maybe the police are the ones who said, hey, I, I did something wrong. I'm, I'm writing a ticket for you. That happens, huh? Yeah, these, these incidents very rarely happen in front of the officers, right? So they ha when they're called to the scene, they, of course, bring their experience to bear, but they may not have all the evidence, point blank. They make a snap decision about fault based off of um, what they see at that scene. But then it's when you get into the investigation, you start getting uh, maybe ring doorbells from neighbors uh, oh. that are, are around. And like you had said, um, uh, shoe leather, well, knocking on doors, right? Um, you start getting the 911 calls, the transcripts. You start getting vehicle inspections. And there's a lot of evidence that can come to light after the officer's investigation that can really turn around a citation or a denial. Um, and so uh, it, certainly if you call our firm, you're going to speak to an attorney. Uh, you're not going to um, get an answer from an intake specialist or, or um, a, a call center. You're going to talk with an attorney and let them bring their experience to bear during the free consultation. Let them tell you what they think needs to happen and do it soon because this evidence that I'm talking about goes away. My mom always taught me never take a no from somebody who's not qualified to give you a yes in the first place. It's <laughs> <laughs> great advice. I would just keep calling and calling. Nevis, what do you think about the folks who might be listening to you in this moment who say, I just don't think I have a case. Somebody already told me it's a, it's a long shot. When in doubt, like Mike said, give our firm a call. We have attorneys who are willing, ready, and able to put the hard work um, to investigate the matter if they believe there are merits to the case. Uh, we will not just turn somebody away. Um, if after investigating we're not able to help these people, we will tell them honestly and frankly why we can't. Not every case can be won, but we do not shy away from the difficult ones. And if in doubt, if somebody has told you no, still give us a call. You know, you might get a different answer from us. Nevis Yurich and Mike Moran will be back with what kind of lawyer takes these cases anyway. This is Lawyers in the House. Stay with us. Welcome back to Lawyers in the House with Motlick. I'm Veronica Waters here with Motlick injury attorneys Mike Moran and Nevis Yurich. And we're talking about long shot cases, the ones where folks probably got told no many times until they wound up with a lawyer who was willing to fight for them. What do you think is the defining characteristic of a lawyer who takes these cases, who doesn't shy away from these? Uh, willing to listen, right? I, every, every person's issue or, or injury is very specific to them and has its own challenges and its own unique situation. I think that's the biggest thing is being able to listen, give the person the ear, let them air out all the facts. Um, I don't, believe we're called by people who honestly think they're at fault. I don't. I think people who are seeking these consultations and second opinions are people who really believe in their mm -hmm. heart of heart they're not at fault. And 
<clears throat> so it's worth listening to why. Why do you feel that way? And then it can mushroom out from there. Mike, you were telling me about this case uh, where somebody was like, she's a fraud. She's faking it. She's lying. Yeah, it was a really horrific case. I had an, an older client. She'll probably kill me if she heard me say that. But she <laughs> um, she was walking home and she walked with the assistance of a cane. She was walking across the street with a, uh, a cane and in a crosswalk and she got hit. And uh, the police came out and, and there was four people in the vehicle and, and they literally young guys too and they said that uh, she laid down her cane and laid in the road and yelled you hit me and uh, they called her a fraud and a faker and the officer uh, was maybe having a bad day I don't know and and he wrote it up that way oh. and uh, and it got worse for her because then the police reports public record and it got picked up by some of these neighborhood groups who published it in like a next door. It was in such and such patch. And oh, my gosh. So they're dragging her name through the mud, too. Yeah. Wow. She was physically hurt. And then her pride took a big beating, too. And so I, I met with her in person, listened to her, wanted to hear this. And it seemed so improbable. And she did go to the hospital and they found physical injuries, evidence that she was hit, evidence she hit the ground hard. She didn't lay down. And we, I took that case, and, and we ended up denials, of course, right? And so we litigated the case, and uh, during depositions, it got real ugly for defense counsel, and it appeared as if maybe they did some switching of the driver at the scene, and uh, mm-hmm. perhaps there was some drinking at a friend's housewarming party, and uh, they left and paid her every penny of that policy limit afterwards. But that woman went from being um, physically and mentally uh abused by these companies and and these actors and and we turned that around for her i'm really proud of that for her vindication vindication what goes into getting you the justice that you deserve even when somebody tells you that your case is a no-go how to find those smoking guns nevis and mike will tell us this is lawyers in the house with motlick stay with us Imagine being shunned by law firm after law firm because they tell you you don't have a case or they just can't be bothered. And then you end up with a lawyer who is willing to go the extra mile for you. We're talking about long shot cases today on Lawyers in the House with Motlick. Welcome back. I'm Veronica Waters here with Motlick injury attorneys Nevis Yurich and Mike Moran. And these attorneys are driven and they're dedicated and they do not shy away from a tough fight. But I know that this is something that requires a lot of time, effort, creativity. You can toot your own horn a little bit <laughs> if you want to. I mean, tell me the truth. Well, yeah, one of the things that happens a lot that I see is, is Georgia has uh, files comparative liability. And uh, what that means is a lot of times insurance companies will say, okay, our insured's at fault, but we're only going to accept 70% of fault and we're going to assign 30% of fault to you. Or, and, and so that means that we're only going to pay you 70% of your damages or we'll pay to repair only 70% of the cost of your car. So it's saying I'm 30% responsible for what happened to me. Correct. Okay. And it can be anything. It could be 60, 40, it can be 80, 20. And, okay. and they're picking numbers out of their hat with their arguments. And so, mm-hmm. um, I would just encourage people not to accept that. Um, if you haven't called already, if you hear that, call us right away at, at 1-800-LAW-NEED. Let us look at this and let us try to add value back into your case that they're trying to strip. Um, because a lot of times those will be bogus arguments or unsupportable. And there will be some facts or evidence that can be uncovered that can turn that. And so just don't ever accept that. Because if you accept it on your car then arguably you're going to accept that on your medicals as well. So call us right away before um, maybe even they assign that to you. Wow, I never even thought about that. Oh, yeah. That is incredible. I'm learning. I always learn so much on this show. <laughs> Seriously, I hope I never need your services, really. <laughs> but my gosh, I've learned so much. I'm still not going to go to Google, though. I'm going to call you up if, <laughs> if, if, I ever, if I ever find myself in need. Nevis, um, you talked about the smoking guns. Mm-hmm. How do you find those? <laughs> Um, in these disputed cases, um, we have to find the evidence to help overturn that liability decision. So how do we do it? Um, something that I regularly do in every case that's similar to this disputed long shot case, I will, um, submit an open records request 
We do those too. And to the business. reporting <laughs> agency. Right. And you would be, you would not believe the wealth of resources and evidence that you can unearth from watching those things. Um, body camera footage from the officers who came to the scene, dash camera footage, um, incident reports that sometimes tell you that somebody was arrested after getting a citation or uh, after they were faulted. Um, uh, 911 calls. Um, it's a plethora of resources that if you have the patience, the willingness, you're, put, you're willing to put in the hard work, sometimes that requires watching hours of tapes, listening to audio, and every once in a while, and more than you can imagine, we will find what I tell my clients is a smoking gun. It's the defendant statement or a statement from somebody, a witness who saw it, or even a self-incriminating statement from the person who we're alleging is at fault instead of our client. Um, sometimes we find things that help us win the case. And in these disputed cases, you have to do that. You have to put in the hard work. Uh, you have to uh, knock down every argument that they've made and an excuse they've made not to pay the claim. And that takes research and investigation and, and creativity, uh, but willingness, willingness to do it. I see the fire key. in your eyes, yeah. right? So you've got something in mind. Tell me. Um, there was a case that I handled uh, for a young man who was a father of three, a uh, very hardworking man uh, was walking to his employer's, uh, to his employer in the morning time. Mm -hmm. um, it was nighttime. He was wearing dark clothing. Uh, the street that he was crossing did not have a walkway. Um, and a big commercial tractor trailer uh, made a wide turn and did not notice that he was there and struck him. The officer who came to the scene uh, put my client at fault. Um, they made every excuse under the sun for why the tractor trailer driver could not see him. They blamed it on the lighting. They blamed it on the pedestrian lack of pedestrian walkway. They blamed it on the shrubbery that was allegedly overgrown that would um, not give uh, a clear view of where he was driving. My client was hurt, understandably. Yeah, so, he hit by a big rig? Yeah, and he called me. He was desperate. Um, he needed help. I met with his family. He had a few small children. He couldn't go to work. And after going to the scene, um, taking pictures of the alleged overgrown shrubbery, uh, examining the lighting, um, getting open records requests, hearing other statements, and then, boom, the smoking gun, a video from a nearby business that captured the collision. Um, we would have never gotten to that point had we not done our research and investigated and pushed hard. And it is the video from a nearby business that captured the crash, essentially, of this tractor trailer hitting my client is what helped overturn the liability. But what was it about the video? Because there was no argument that your client got hit by the truck. Sure. Yeah. Um, the uh, footage revealed that the tractor trailer was driving pretty fast, took a very wide turn, was in the lane of passage uh, that he wasn't supposed to be in, and that uh, at the time of striking my client, his vehicle was straight. He had a clear, unobstructed view that his headlights would have captured. Um, and it took a lot of hard work, a lot of fighting with the firm that was hired by the trucking company, but they came to their senses and had it not been for the tape and the images that we took of the scene a day after it happened, I don't know that we would have been able to win for this man and, and helped him get his life back on track. That is so frightening. Once again, I'm just wowed by how scary it's got to be to be in these situations and just feel so hopeless and helpless, like you said. I mean, Mike, you and Nevis have both had these cases. Both of you have such a track record with these. Um, what is it that drives you when you hear somebody say, well, they said it was my fault? They said it. They said I did it. Yeah, unfairness um, and a search for the truth. I mean, to, to really peel it back. I've worked the case with Nevis and we, we went to the scene um, during the day. We went to the scene at night just so we could immerse ourselves into it and figure it out and um, and learn about it and understand it. And it's it's 
it's uh, it's hard to do that if, if you're only giving somebody 30 seconds uh, in a consultation and it's um, and you'll miss inevitably an awful lot. Um, and so getting your hands into the case, but ultimately it's about uncovering the truth and mm-hmm. um, and and making that come to light for somebody who is is been put in a bad position. Can you tell me about that case that you two? Sure. It was a pedestrian case walking in the roadway. So not a lot of legal protections um, struck and killed, unfortunately, and a grieving family in a different state. It was a really horrific, horrific case. And and it was um, a a driver who uh, claimed that, you know, she was not able able to be seen. Um, And so we were there, I think, the day or two after it happened on on the road and Mm -hmm. Uh, the the officers' paintings on the road were still there. It was really uh, horrific and mm-hmm. and heartbreaking. And um, and then we were there shortly after at night, and the ambient lighting was absolutely not what the defendant was saying. It was plentiful, and there was other reasons why this happened. Um, and so we were able to get at least answers for a family that were in a different state. They called you. The family from out of state called. Who yes. called? Yeah. Yes, the family did, and and. Um, and we hit the ground running, uh, literally, and we're there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I think the other thing our lawyers do is we share this information with our clients because I think clarity for somebody is equally as important as uh, as taking the case. They need to be updated and understand what's happening and what we're seeing. And I think our firm does a very good job of that. We mail them copies. Our clients get copies of everything we do. And um, and they have an individual attorney. In this case, it was a team of attorneys working for them. And uh, we pride ourselves on giving them really regular updates. So clarity during these moments of pain, mm-hmm. I think, is really essential, too. Mm-hmm. The the willingness, as Neva said, to like spend those hours, because I know this doesn't take. Listen, I know how it, it takes time to wait for an open records request. And then depending on what you get, it takes a long time to comb through all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Body cam footage. That's like that could be very long minutes of like not much happening that you. Yeah. And and I'm glad you said that. Um, Sometimes we have to go back to the reporting agency two, three, four, five times. We have to get the court involved because sometimes they don't want to release the records. But we don't stop trying if we believe the client and that the case has merits and that the law, in fact, can support a win. We don't stop. We push until we get to the truth, like Mike said. And typically, um, that means a win for our clients. Um, but yeah, not giving up, just putting the fight um, is, is super important, and we don't shy away from that. Tell me about a case that sticks with you, maybe that um, had to do with one of these, something that somebody said, a, a witness, a police officer, anybody that... You know, somebody who wasn't directly involved. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Recently, I had a case where um, two parties, including my client, uh, were both faulted equally by the reporting agency that came to the scene. Um, A lot of dispute is turning uh, a failure to yield while turning left. So this Um, is is this like a merge or something? This is, you know, one party is going straight. The other one is trying to take a left in front of them. And typically it uh, results in a T-bone collision. So So they're usually demolished vehicles. In my situation, my client had a head injury. He also sustained a very serious uh, uh, injury of the leg that necessitated emergency surgery. He had lost his job. He was disabled from work. His life was in shambles when I spoke with him and his wife. Um, the officer said, you know, they're both at fault. We, we can't get to the bottom of the truth uh, because both clients sustained head trauma. They weren't able to really articulate what happened. Their memory was vague of the event, which is not uncommon when you lose consciousness temporarily. Um, so neither one of them could really say what happened. Exactly. So okay. the officer said, we'll let the insurance company decide. Of course, the insurance company decided against my client and he was looking to get nothing, uh, you know, and he had bills in the tens of thousands and he was disabled par- partially. We did an open records request. I sifted through hours of footage, audio, and just when I thought I can't win this case, I was able to find a statement from the other driver's family member who had called in 
uh, 911 and explained and gave some information that uh, allowed us to point the finger at him and say he was at fault for those reasons. I can't disclose, but it was the family member of the who we believe to be that fault driver that helped us win the case. And we would have never found that had I not, you know, pushed for the open records request, had I not listened to those tapes. And there was the smoking gun. The smoking gun. Dedication and perseverance, the name of the game. Nevis Yurich and Mike Moran. I'm Veronica Waters. Just ahead, Motlick's closing argument. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Lawyers in the House with Motlick. I'm your host, Veronica Waters. You've been waiting for this all hour long. We're talking about long shot cases, and it's time for Motlick's closing argument. Argument, Nevis Yurich and Mike Moran, the floor is yours. So the four reasons why you should call Montlick and Associates in case another firm has already denied your claim or an insurance company has denied liability on your claim. Uh, number one, uh, you will talk with an attorney. You will speak with a lawyer um, and, and you will get a full consult for the, from them for free and they will listen. And that's we've talked earlier about hearing the fact pattern. Um, Let them hear what you have to say and bring forward what your thoughts are. If you've been hurt by somebody and you may be getting blamed uh, and you honestly believe that's incorrect, call us. Um, Speak to an attorney, not to someone else, not to uh, any other um, person at the firm. You'll speak with an attorney when you call us. Number two, Keep in mind that insurance companies uh, will do whatever they can to pay as little as they can or outright deny your case, and that's just their M.O. So you can expect that. Um, You're not special. They're doing that to everyone. And so uh, call us and, and ask us about that and let us talk to you about that. Number three, there could be additional avenues of recovery that the other firm never gave you as an option. Um, And lastly, like Mike said, we will listen to your story. We will try to help you. But if for some reason we cannot, we will do our very best to be as frank and honest and walk you through the reasons why we cannot help. We might even be able to give you some options on how to proceed on your own. Um, But you will never know until you call us. um, And um, it, it definitely is worth a shot. When in doubt, call us and, and we'll do what we can to help. And what's it like when you have those conversations with somebody that you did have to tell no? You know, sometimes people actually have thanked me. Um, they have told me that um, because I took the time and care to explain why we couldn't take on a matter, it gave them a peace of mind um, and they felt at ease that um, there was a true reason why somebody couldn't take on a case and not just some excuse that they were given to get them off the phone as quickly as possible. I have talked to several Motlick injury attorneys by now who tell me that they spend a lot of time on the phone with folks, even when they don't take the cases, because it's important to let them know the why behind the we can't. Mm -hmm. And how gratifying must it be to just finally feel heard Mm -hmm. Never give up the fight. I think that's our lesson learned today on Lawyers in the House with Nevis Yurich and Mike Moran. Thank you so much for being back with me. Two of my faves. I can't wait until you guys come back again. Thank you. You missed some great nuggets if you're joining us late. So make sure that you follow us on social at Motlick Law. You can always drop us a line any time of the day or night at LawyersInTheHouse.com. And subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform because we are there. Lawyers in the House will be back with you next week. I'm Veronica Waters. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us.